A lot of people watch my videos and see me using really expensive tools and they think, yeah, but how can I do it? I don't have those expensive tools. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to tile a floor using some of the tools I started out with, which are less expensive. Welcome to my channel. My name is Nasreen and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this bathroom floor go from this to this. First, you wanna get down to the subfloor. So if you have tile, laminate, or linoleum, you need to get that up. If your floor is concrete, you don't need to lay down hardy backers so you can skip this step. You also need to take out the toilet and remove the door, which I already did. Before you lay down the hardy backer, make sure you vacuum so your subfloor is clean. Also make sure you don't have any nails or screws sticking up like this one. We're gonna screw this one in a little more. This is three by five quarter inch hardy backer. And this room is a little under five by five, so I'm gonna need two sheets. First, I'm gonna measure from here to here, and then I'm gonna come down three feet and measure from here to there. And then I'm gonna cut this side off of the hardy backer because this wall is not as straight as the other side. Make sure to subtract a quarter inch off each side because you don't want the hardy backer pushing up against the walls or the tub. Now you could cut the hardy backer with a $5 razor blade. It's tough but doable. I've done it before. And if you're only gonna be cutting a few pieces of hardy backer, you might as well use a razor blade. If you wanna see a video on the different ways to cut hardy backer, I'll leave it in the description below. But if you have more than one tile job, I'd recommend getting one of these. It's called the Snapper Shear Pro and the good people at Snapper Shear Pro sent me this amazing tool to try out and I gotta be honest with you guys this is one of my most favorite tools and it makes cutting hardy backer super easy with very little dust let's go outside and cut some hardy backer look at how crooked the room is it widens out over here and then gets smaller and smaller So I got a piece of cardboard with two straight edges and I'm gonna use this to make a template to cut the hole for the toilet flange. Since this side is straight and the wall's not, I'm gonna use this side as my guide. I'm gonna put it up against the corner and cut the hole where the flange is. I'm kinda gonna look where it's at, right there. And just, that's where I'm gonna start cutting. Make yourself a little hole so you can see where you're going. You don't have to be a professional to do this. Now I'm gonna head to the outside edge. Just cut all the way around. We almost got it here. There we go. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just as close as you can get it. Lay this piece in here and see how it fits. It's pretty good. First, you wanna make sure it's not touching anywhere and that you have about a quarter inch space between the walls and the tub. Now I'm gonna take my template and put it up in the corner and draw out my circle. Again, you could use a razor blade to cut a circle with a bunch of lines running through it and hammer it out. But I'm gonna drill a few holes and cut it with my Snapper Shear Pro because it's a lot easier. All right, I'm ready to put my Snapper Shear Pro in there and cut my circle. Here we go. Look at that beautiful circle. I love the Snapper Shear Pro. You guys have to get one of these. It's amazing, I promise you. Fits good, that should do it. Now I'm gonna measure from here to here and leave an eighth inch off this side for my joint line and a quarter inch off this side so it doesn't touch the wall. Now I'm gonna take my tape measure and use it as a guide to draw a line from one side to the other. All right, we're ready to cut. It's so cold out here, guys freezing but we're still working all right here we go nice all 
This thing only costs about 80 bucks. It is so worth it. All right, I have all my hardy backer cut and it fits good. And now I'm gonna mix a thin set. You really need a bigger drill for this because if you use a small one, you could burn it out. I'm gonna put the water in first so it doesn't clump up at the bottom so much. Here we go. All right, now we're gonna put our mortar. And this is the part I dread because these are so freaking heavy. All right, here we go. I look silly doing this every time, but what the heck. Now you wanna make sure and hold your bucket and start slow. And then you can work up the speed. <laughs> That's why you wanna hold your bucket. All right, remember we want it to a pancake batter consistency. The instructions say to mix it for three minutes, let it sit for five, and then mix it for one more. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set my timer for three minutes and mix away. You want it to a pancake batter consistency. I'm using a 1 4th by 1 4th notch trowel. You want to pick it up with the flat side, put some on there, and just start laying it down. You need to get enough on there that you can spread out. Just wipe it off if you drip it anywhere. Remember you wanted a pancake batter consistency. Just spread it all out. I'm gonna get these little edges by the flange and the tub and then I'm gonna pour some out so it'll go a little faster. All right, now we're gonna pour some out. Now we're just gonna spread it out. This stuff feels perfect. Then you use the notch side to make the grooves and you wanna hold it at a 45 degree angle. And you want all the grooves going in the same direction. Forty-five degree angle, roots going in the same direction, and you can put the extra thin set back in the bucket. Remember, you want to have your grooves going in the same direction and as straight as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just do your best. Since this was a tight fit, I'm going to scrape this extra stuff off and dry fit my other piece one more time, just to make sure I don't have to cut it again. I'm not putting this stuff back in my bucket because it's a little dry. I'm just going to throw it away. If you're worried about this sweater, it's not a fancy sweater. It cost me three bucks. So I'm just using it for this because I don't care about it. Well, today I had to do another COVID test on my way over here. It's my 25th one. And I'm so tired of being poked up the nose. I wish they could get the saliva test, but they haven't yet. So just smooth it all out. And then we'll put our grooves in. All right. I think we're ready for some grooves. All right, remember we want the grooves going in the same direction still. Now if there's not enough, you can put a little more on there and just go over it again. Sometimes that happens. This is ready to put our grooves in. 
The reason I put Thinset under the hardy backer is to help stabilize the floor. I've seen a few jobs where they didn't do it and every time you walk on it, it creaks and the grout is cracking. All right, we're ready to lay our hardy backer down. It's always better to use an impact drill rather than a normal drill to screw down your hardy backer because the impact drill drives the screws in a lot better. But a regular drill is really handy for pre-drilling the holes. First, I'm gonna pre-drill some holes. They should be three fourths from the edge, two inches from the corner, and at least eight inches apart. Now I'm gonna be using these one and a quarter inch cement board screws. And I'm using the star bit screw because they work a lot better. You just wanna make sure the screw isn't sticking up above the surface. I remember the first time I did this, I used a regular drill to do this and it was terrible. It was so much work. Now I'm gonna tape the joints using this two inch self-adhesive alkaline resistant fiberglass tape. If you don't tape the joints, there's a much higher chance of your tile breaking along that joint. All right, this stuff is sticky, so you wanna tape over the joint line and the joint line should be in the middle of the tape. Just like that. And then we're just gonna cut it at the end over there. And that's it. It's also a good idea to clean your trowel every once in a while so the thin set doesn't harden up because we're about to use it again. All right, you wanna lay your thin set over the tape and you wanna smooth it out. You want it to be thin, but you wanna push it in so it fills in all the little grooves. You wanna smooth this stuff out really thin. You don't want it to have a bump. All right, I got my thin set on, I got my hardy backer screwed down, I got my joint line taped. I'm gonna let this dry and come back and show you how to tile. It's really good to lay out your tiles before you install them so you can get an idea of how you want the layout to look. So this is how I'm gonna do mine. Some of the tiles look a lot alike, so you wanna make sure and space them out. I'm trying to avoid a really small cut by the tub, so I cut a few inches off the piece by the door, then I'll have an extra few inches for this side. The box recommends these tiles be offset 15 to 30%, with a minimum 1 8 inch grout line. So I offset these tiles five inches. To get the measurements to cut the tile, I always use my wonderful combination square. It already has a 1 8 inch lip, which accounts for a grout line. So what you do is you put it at the edge of the tile, push it forward to where it's close to the wall, but not touching it, because you don't want the tile touching the wall, like this one. And then you lock it into place. It locks right here by turning this. Then you put it up against the tile and make your measurement. This thing is wonderful and so easy to use for people that have a hard time with measurements. Now I'm gonna get the other side. So you do the same thing, put it at the edge of the tile, push your ruler forward and then just lock it into place. Then you put it up against your tile and mark it. Now we're gonna go cut it. I have a really nice expensive towel saw that I paid about $700 for, but I wanted to show you guys that it could be done with a cheap towel cutter and an angle grinder. To use the towel cutter, you bring the handle all the way to the bottom, put your towel in there, and line it up with the top right here. Put it up against the top edge, make sure your top and bottom is lined up, and then score it. And then you just kind of push it down and it breaks it. And here's our piece. Now we're doing the length. And see, I marked my pants, dang it. Good thing I don't care about these pants. All right, we're gonna cut it right here. We're gonna put it up against the edge. We're gonna align it perfectly, as perfect as we can. I'm just gonna double check it by running this thing over it. Make sure it's right. And then break it. Let's go try it out. All right, put it in there. Put your spacers in between. 
Looks great. Now we're gonna cut the piece that goes up against the tub. A problem you may run into is this tile is too long for the tile cutter. So we're gonna use this angle grinder to make the cut. I'm gonna be using a four and a half inch tile cutting blade. And as always, don't forget to wear your goggles and a mask. And it's also sometimes good to wear ear protection because this thing is loud. Don't worry about how clean the cut comes out because it's gonna be covered anyway and you'll get better as you go. The key to it is just taking it nice and slow. Now to the flange. This is another cut the angle grinder is really good for. So I'm gonna lay my tile down. Be very careful not to chip it. I've already chipped a few. I'm a little clumsy and so it happens. Good thing I bought a lot of extra tiles. So you wanna put your spacers in there so you know where it's gonna sit. Push it all together, really good. Now I'm gonna take the template that we made earlier and lay it down against the tub and trace the area we're gonna cut out. So I'm running out of room in this bathroom, all right. Right there. Let's go cut it with the angle grinder. Now, as you can see, it's not a perfect circle, but I'm gonna do my best to cut it like one. So for this one, make sure you cut on the outer side of the line because if you don't, it's gonna be too tight. Looks pretty good. Let's take it inside and see how it fits. Look at all that makeup in there, yuck. All right, we're gonna see how this fits. Super gentle. Spacers. It fits really good. Now we're gonna measure from here to here and here to here and get our cut. Now you wanna put your tile back down right where you want it. Spacers. It's kind of hard to get them in there, but just so we can get an idea of where it's going to be. We're going to lay our template back over. Remember it goes against the tub and the corner there. And then we're going to draw out the rest of the circle. All right. Time to go outside and cut. All right, let's see how it fits. People are very intimidated by this toilet cup, but it's pretty simple with the angle grinder. Bam, it fits like a glove. Yep, that looks nice. Last piece, let's see how it looks. We're gonna have to cut a little bit off. I had to cut off a little more because it didn't fit the first time, but now it fits perfect. Bam! It's a really good idea to pre-cut your tiles, especially if you're doing this project by yourself, because you don't want your thin set drying out while you're trying to cut all these pieces, especially if you don't get it perfect the first time and you have to cut it over again and your thin set's sitting there drying out. I numbered all the tiles with a piece of tape on the upper right hand corner so I would know which order to lay them down. I'm gonna be trying something a little different. I usually draw my guideline, but when I lay the thin set down, it ends up covering it up. Instead, I'm gonna be using this piece of tape as my guideline. I'm also gonna mark the wall where the tile ends, right about there. So I laid all my tiles down right here and they're in the exact same order as the bathroom so I can come in and grab each one as I need it. Before I start tiling, I'm gonna take a quick break to eat a snack because I'm getting so hungry. Mmm. This beef jerky is so good. Mmm. Gets you ready to do some tiling. If you guys want the recipe for my delicious beef jerky, you can check it out on YouTube at Nasreen's Kitchen. Let's get to work. 
All right, now we're gonna mix the thin set. I'm gonna be pouring the water in first so it doesn't clump up at the bottom as much. Okay, we're using porcelain thin set because our tiles are porcelain. I'm just using up the rest of this bag I have here. Wait a minute, we're forgetting something. You should wear a mask when you're doing this because it's really dusty and I always forget, so I'm gonna grab my mask. I'm ready. All right, we're gonna use up the rest of this bag here. Let the dust settle. Whew, it's hard to breathe. Imagine wearing an N95 mask every day at work. That's what I have to do. And it sucks. Now we're gonna mix the thin set with our mixing paddle. And make sure you don't touch the button while it's plugged in because I did that one time and I made a hole in the wall. Okay, you wanna hold on to your bucket because it will get away from you. And you wanna start slow and you can work up the speed as you go. Now I'm gonna follow the instructions on the bag. I'm gonna mix it for three minutes, let it sit for five, and then mix it for one more. After you mix it for a minute, you can get a trowel and scrape around the edges of the bottom of the bucket where the thin set clumps up. And I just did that, so now I'm gonna mix it for the three minutes. Here we go. Oh, I need to set a timer. Three minute timer. Three minutes. Hold your bucket, start slow, and then work your way up. Okay, set it for five minutes. I usually only mix about half a bag of thin set at a time so it doesn't burn out my drill and it's all I can really use while I'm tiling before it starts drying out. Three, two, one, bing. Let's set it for one more minute and it'll be ready to go. Looks nice and creamy. You want it to a smooth peanut butter consistency. I'm using a 1 4 by 1 4 square notch trowel and I'm gonna lay some mud down, spread it out with the flat side and lay down the tiles. All right, it's a lot faster if you can pour some down. And we're gonna do this whole section at once. We're probably gonna have to mix some more thin set up. But we're gonna get started here. Okay, I'm gonna spread it out with the flat side. We don't want to scrape the tub, so we got to be super careful around the tub. Just trying to spread it out evenly. Ooh, it feels so nice and creamy. Just the right consistency. Peanut butter. We're going to lay all this area down at once up to our guideline. All right, we got this whole area ready to go. We're gonna put our grooves in next. It just splattered across the wall. You should always have a wet washcloth so you can clean up your mistakes. Just wipe it off, it comes right off. Now we're gonna use the notch side to make the grooves that create that suction. You hold it at a 45 degree angle and you just smooth it all the way across and you put the extra thin set back in the bucket. You want all the grooves to go in the same direction. If it's a little too thin, just put some more mud up there and do it over again. It's not a big deal. If you have a little bit extra on the floor, just pick it up and put it in the bucket. Now I'm gonna back butter. I'm gonna put a thin layer of thin set on the back of each tile. It just helps it stick really good and make sure that it's not gonna come off. Now when you do this, you wanna make sure you're careful so you don't chip the tile. 
So you gotta be really careful with these tiles because you don't wanna have to cut in the middle of this. They're already all pre-cut and ready to go, which makes it a lot easier. Just a thin layer. You can put the thin set back in the bucket that you're not using. All right, now I have the number on the top of the right hand corner so I know which way it's gonna lay. And I'm just gonna put it down and move it back and forth. That collapses the grooves. All right, now I'm gonna get the next tile. Oop, dirty, dirty, dirty. Okay, just drag it across. You can get more mud if you need it. I'm gonna lay it down gently. Move it back and forth. Push it down a little bit and we're gonna have to get our spacers in there now. I'm using the 1 8 inch tabby spacers. I like these spacers a lot. And you want them about an inch off the corners. You push your tile together and you can get that mud out of there that kind of builds up. And we're gonna adjust this whole thing once I have more tiles in. It's nice to have a day off from work. This is the toilet flange cut. We're gonna lay that down very carefully. These are gonna have to go up so it'll fit. Now I'm gonna line it up with my guideline and the line I put on the wall. Looks like it needs to go up just a little bit right there. We're gonna take this off. Looks pretty good, guys. I think this is gonna work. Okay, I'm gonna cut it right here so that it doesn't take the whole tape off. That actually worked pretty good. I'm gonna put some wedge spacers against the back here so it doesn't try sliding up against the tub. These are pretty little handy spacers I found. Looks like two of them are gonna fit in there. And as I go, I'm gonna take a wet washcloth and just wipe the tub off and the tiles because we really don't want that stuff drying on there. It's hard to get off. It's so much easier when it's still kind of wet. So we're just gonna wipe all my little fingerprints off here and the wall. There, looks better. Okay. Back and forth. Collapse those grooves, get some of that thin set out of there. And then we're gonna put our spacers an inch off each corner. Push it together. Now for the next one, I'm gonna have to be careful sliding this one in. There we go. Slide it back and forth. We're gonna have to push this one over that way because it's too tight. And that's why we're doing them all at once so we can adjust them. There we go. I think that's gonna work. All right, I'm gonna put number six down now. This is the other side of the toilet flange. And I am no longer cold, I am super hot. Back and forth, push it down a little bit. Put our spacers in there. And then we want one right here. All right, number seven going down, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, back and forth. And spacers, where are the spacers? If you need to, you can push it down a little bit and get some thin set out of there, just to even it out. And then we're gonna get our level in a minute and check it. Okay, let's wipe it off. So windy outside, you could hear the wind blowing. All right, an inch off the corners, guys. We're getting there. It's a good thing this is a small bathroom. Not too much to tile. Pull it open a little bit and get your spacer in there. Now we're gonna take the rest of our tape off and line it all up. Looks like we did a pretty good job staying on our line. Wow, perfection! It's good to check it with your level and you want it as flat across as you can get it. And that feels pretty darn good. 
It's also a good idea to keep a bucket around so you can wash your trowel as you're going. It can build up too much thin set and the thin set dries on there and the grooves just don't come out that well. So that's what I'm doing. I'm washing it off so I can just keep going. Bam! All right. We're getting that mud down. Very careful around the nearby tiles. Not to be chipping them now. Spread it out. Use the flat side to pick it up out of the bucket and spread it. It feels so good to be able to do this yourself. It's such a wonderful feeling. I don't have to call somebody and pay somebody, especially since I flip houses. It is very helpful to know how to do this. When you have big tiles like these, you want your trowel lines to go this way, so when you push it down, the air has a shorter distance to come out, as opposed to coming out all the way across this way. Get this next line of tiles down, and then we'll be more than halfway done. This is number eight. It goes over here. It's so handy when you have your numbers on there. Get some mud out of there. Throw it back in the bucket. And since we have our guideline, all the rest of the tiles will kind of just flow after that. It's wonderful. I can hear the little air pockets coming out, pushing it side to side, down a little bit. Feels pretty flush, so I'm gonna put my spacers in there. I have the last piece going down. Since this tile doesn't have anything to lean against and it could slide, I'm gonna tape this one to that one. I'm gonna hold it up. I'm gonna push it together and tape it like that. And then I'm gonna tape this one to this one because this one's already set in place. Okay, there we go. So it's all done, it looks beautiful. I'm gonna let it dry for a few days and then come back and grout. So the tiles are dry and now I'm gonna take out the spacers and clean them up. The spacers should come out pretty easy, but if you're having a hard time, you can use a pair of channel locks or pliers and that should help take them out. That one's kind of hard right there, so I'm gonna get a pair of channel locks. Just grab a hold of it and pull it out. There's a few tough ones there. Yep, works good. A little hard on that one. There. They're kind of set in the thin set, so they get stuck in there. We're gonna take our stickers off as we go because we don't need them anymore. But they were super handy. We're just gonna wipe down our tiles. All the extra thin set that's on them. They look so pretty, guys. Look at that, wow. I love this tile. This part goes really quick. Not too much time spent on just wiping them down real fast. If you don't leave them too dirty while you're tiling, it's easy to clean up right now. But if you leave them a mess, then you're gonna spend some more time trying to clean it up now. You wanna see my knee pads? Yep, they don't fit, they're always falling down. It's kind of funny, but it's not funny when you're trying to work. They just always slide to my legs. I've already tried some rollerblading knee pads like people suggested, but those have no padding in them. So I'm still on the lookout for some good knee pads. If anyone has any suggestions, this is just ridiculous. Next, I'm gonna be using my grout removal tool to take out any thin set that's sticking up between the tiles because it could show through when you grout. Just be careful not to chip the tiles. See, it just takes it right out. 
This tool is excellent for removing extra grout. See that? Now I'm gonna vacuum up all the grout lines and it'll be ready to grout. I'm gonna be mixing my grout to the same consistency as a thin set, like peanut butter. I'm gonna be using unsanded grout because my grout lines are an eighth of an inch. Anything over an eighth of an inch needs sanded grout to keep it from shrinking and cracking. And I'm using the Mape unsanded grout with polymers in the color silver. We're gonna put some water in first. It just helps it so it doesn't clump up. Then we're gonna put the grout, but I'm gonna remember my mask. I should be really good at putting these on by now. We should all be good at putting these on. All right, now my grout. We're gonna use the whole bag. It was already open, it had a little bit missing, but it's pretty much full. All right, let the dust settle. All right, let's get the cord back there. Always start slow and then you can work up speed. Even though you add water, it still seems to clump up on the sides, so don't forget to get your little trowel and get some of that dry stuff, see? It just clumps up there, but it's easy to get off. And then we can mix it up. You always want to make sure and follow the instructions on the bag. And this says to mix it for three to five minutes, let it sit for five, and then mix it for one to two more. So we're gonna mix it for about four minutes. You get the grout with your rubber trowel and work it in each line at an angle. You just kind of pull the extra off the tiles, bring it down and keep going down the tile. Just remember at an angle. You want to press it in really good because if it's just brushed over it could end up cracking later. You want that grout to go all the way to the bottom. Now we don't need to do over here by the wall, but we are gonna have to do it by the tub. Just get it in there. Press it in there pretty good. The reason you don't have to grout all the way up against the wall is because the trim is gonna cover right over it, like that. I don't know why, but I like to grout. It's just easy, it's fun. I'm having a blast. I guess I just like to tile. I like to fix things and make them look beautiful. This is gonna go really quick because it's a small bathroom, which is nice. The last tile job I did was a big bathroom. It took quite a while to grout. Right, it's looking good. Remember to go at an angle. After about 15 minutes, you get a grouting sponge and you clean off the extra grout. Put it in the water and you squeeze it out really, really good. You don't want too much extra water in it getting on the tiles. Make sure you go diagonal over the grout lines because if you go along the line, you can take the grout right back out. We're also gonna get the extra grout off the tile. And don't worry too much about the film it leaves. We're gonna go back and wipe it off again later. Maybe a few more times. Make sure to rinse out your sponge pretty often. And if you're doing a large bathroom, it's a good idea to change out your water in between because it gets pretty dirty. So we're gonna keep going at an angle. All right, looks really good.
We're almost done. Just a little more. Remember you want it to a peanut butter consistency. Diagonal O for the grout lines. We let it sit for 15 minutes. Let it dry in there before we clean it up with the water. Rinse it out, squeeze it really good. And just make sure we didn't miss any spots. Like right there. All right, we're at the very end. Yay! It's all done. I'm gonna let the grout dry for 48 hours and then I'm gonna come back and seal it. So I just cleaned the haze off the tiles with this dry washcloth and now I'm gonna be sealing the grout. I'm using Aquamix Grout Sealer, which is for sanded and unsanded grout. And I'm using this applicator bottle with these small bristle brushes at the end, which are perfect for applying the grout sealer. It fits right in the grout line. It says to shake it really good. All right. Put it in our applicator bottle. Be careful. It's white, but it dries clear and it doesn't change the color of the grout. I don't think we need too much because this is a small bathroom and we're ready to go. You can adjust this applicator tip to where a lot comes out or a little. You don't want a lot to come out because then you're cleaning up a lot. You apply it to the grout lines. Got a lot coming out right now, but I'm gonna adjust it. This little applicator makes it so easy to apply the sealer. I can't believe I'm on the final step today. Feels so good to have it done. I have it coming out to about the perfect amount right now. Just enough to fill it in, but not overfill it. Make sure and clean any grout sealer off the tile within five minutes because it will leave a residue on the tile. And once it's dry, it's really hard to get off. So it's better to do it while it's fresh. So you just get a damp washcloth and then just kind of clean on the sides of the grout line. And just use different sections of your towel and get that extra sealer off the tile. And then you rinse it off and keep going. Eventually this water turns milky white, so you're gonna have to change it a few times, especially if you have a big bathroom. It's really good to seal your grout because it helps protect it from water, dirt, and grease. You want to keep your grout as good as long as you can and this just extends the life of it. A lot of people don't do it, but you really should. Remember to wipe it right by the grout line. Just turn your towel around, use the other side. Now I'm gonna wait 30 minutes and apply one more coat. All right, it's been about 30 minutes. The grout lines look dry and now we're gonna add a second coat. Open it up a little bit and go. The total cost to towel this floor was $680 for the tools and $200 for the supplies, which is a total of $880. But once you have all the tools, you can tile a floor this size for about $200 or less. After you clean it real good, you could also dry it with a towel. And that makes it look really nice. The floor came out beautiful, I love it. And just knowing that I did it myself makes me feel so good. I hope this video helps you with your tiling projects and you realize you can do it too. With a little determination, anything is possible. Just look at me, I'm a nurse and I'm remodeling houses and installing beautiful floors. Don't forget to subscribe and share my videos. 
Bye. Look at that beautiful floor. And the good people of Snapper Shear Pro get those peas out. Before I start tiling, I'm gonna take a quick. It fell out of my pocket. You also need to take out the door and remove the toilet. <laughs> Thing only costs about 80, guys. First, you need to get to your subfloor. So if you have tile, laminate, or tile. Watch out, move the cord, move the cord. There we go. I just spilled the water everywhere. Ugh. It's a good idea to change out your water in the team. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. Oh my God, it's just flinging crap everywhere. It's dripping everywhere, huh? This is the story of my life, making messes all the time. I'm cleaning them up afterwards. That's what I'm about to do. Next, I'm gonna be using my grout removal tool to take out any thin set that's sticking up between the grout because it could show through when you grout. <laughs> 